Today in the lab, we're going to go over virtual switches, or commonly referred to as a V-switch, also known as a standard switch. Okay, so this video is going to be probably pretty quick, pretty short. I don't expect it to take more than uh, probably less than 10 minutes, actually, I should say, to kind of go over all this and go over what I want to talk about, which is V-switches, as I said at the beginning of this video. Now, what is a V-switch or a virtual switch? A virtual switch is basically a physical switch. It's the same thing. It's just virtual. It's a software-defined switch, I guess you could say, in which then an, its application, such as a hypervisor or an actual, you know, sometimes there's actually other VoIP switches you can actually run. I know Shortel, Mitel, there are some others out there that have their own, um, you know, appliances that you can run as virtual switches but what it does is it allows you to go ahead and tag network traffic and allow you to control network traffic and allow you to basically direct how traffic should go based off virtual machines or other things and the most basic thing that vSwitch does basically is tag VLANs and that's why I love them so much so let's kind of dive in over here I've kind of got it already up on my screen over here is my VCSA and some of my lab. Here's my HPE host over here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to jump on down one of these hosts. Let's jump on down. Actually, I think host two has some more. Yeah, it's got more spread out between the, my VDI and my my uh, actual main LAN. So VD, or VLAN, I should say. So here we go. We have VLAN ID 23 and VLAN ID 24. I'm going to go ahead and kind of pop these out a little bit. And this is where it gets kind of cool. You'll notice right here, it kind of looks like an Ethernet plug. These are off, and that's because if you notice over here, these machines are actually offline. So that's why these are off. It means they're not, not plugged in. And if you notice, each one of these play, it means it's online. It's this. Here we go. It's plugged in. It's running on the V switch called Bode TX with a VLAN ID of 23. Now, what's really awesome about this is that Basically, anytime you go into a machine, if I were to go into the same machine over here and we were to edit its settings, all right, let me go ahead and let's just bring up its settings, and we come in the network adapter, one of the things is, is you'll actually go ahead and pick what network you want it to be on, and that's what a virtual switch does, is it actually creates that network that you'll go ahead and put things on, and as you notice, I have a bunch of different ones here, but what I did is I selected the Bode TX network, and what that allows it to do is that if that machine, its NIC is being tagged with VLAN 23 on any data that's coming over it. So that means instead of me having to worry about, you know, tagging it on the machine level or any of that on the guest level, it actually allows me to tag it on the hypervisor level, which is really great because it allows me to then, we can create that same V switch, and if you notice, it's all created across these different hosts, and that allows us to actually vMotion machines across because the V switch is there and it can hand off and know how to tag that information. Now, how this is done is kind of the same way that a physical switch is done. I'm going to actually go up here. Here's my physical. This is a 2960S series right here. Now, I wanted to kind of show you the reason why I wanted to show you this is that if we look here, we actually have those same little green icons. These actually mean they're live. These means they're offline. But the one thing I wanted to actually go over is the physical switch. So if you see here, I have all these trunk ports right here. And what these trunk ports are, these, these are actually my three hosts that I have set up right now currently. Um, the way they are is that these three hosts each have two one gig uplinks into this switch and they're all trunked. What trunk means is that all VLAN traffic is actually allowed over these ports. And the reason that they're allowed over these ports is that I actually handle the VLAN tagging as we were just talking about over here on the V switch. So the way that actually works is that if we actually were to go into add networking, we can go ahead and actually add in a VM machine port group or standard switch. We can go ahead and we'll make a new switch. Well. Actually, I can't because I don't have any standby adapters, but we can't select an existing switch. We'll select vSwitch 0, which is the original one. But then right here is where I'm talking about is that we can actually type in and we could actually put all of our VLANs. We can type in and make any type of VLAN network that we want. And it's as easy as, you know, I could go ahead and let's put test network and let's put it that it's on VLAN 33. Now, this actually won't work whenever I do this. The reason being is that I actually don't have a VLAN 33 set up. You'll actually need to go ahead and make sure that you have all your routing, your layer three routing set up so that way your VLANs actually know how to talk to one another and route to one another. Now, this can be done multiple ways. You can go ahead and set up a switch to do the routing and actually route between the VLANs, or you can actually have your firewall or router take care of that, depending on how your setup goes and, you know, what you do. What you do here is you would go ahead and click finish, and that would create your V switch just as I have here and it would actually be created on that VM kernel adapter that I was just talking about that has the ports hooked up into here. 
And what that then allows it to do is that anything that's connected here will get tagged with VLAN 23 and be pushed over the trunk port up to my firewall. My firewall handles my routing. Now, down here, I have these all actually as static ports and they're all tagged to trunk 23. So that way, anything that's actually plugged into these ports here automatically gets tagged with 23. And this is on the physical level because I do have some physical devices such as ILOs, IDRAX, and then I do have a few new physical machines such as the new Plex servers. I don't know if some of you guys have seen the post or not, but that is, you know, a new physical machine. So those are actually plugged directly in and actually require static access. And that's a whole nother video I'll go over later on is how to set up, you know, your Cisco and how to go ahead and get layer three and layer two routing done. And basically what that's all about. This is just kind of an introduction into more of the advanced things, especially into ESXi. So back over here, that's all I really wanted to go over, I guess I should say. I'm gonna end it on that, sorry guys. That, that like I said, less than 10 minutes, that's what a V-switch is. It's basically a physical switch, but kind of a dumbed down version, and it allows you to go ahead and tag machines on a network level and make sure that their traffic is tagged properly and actually being routed properly. And the big reason this is a nice case is that you may have some phone systems that need to be on a proper, I'll go back to the beginning of this video where I was talking about switches and phone systems and things like that. You may have a phone appliance or you may have another appliance that needs to be on a certain VLAN. Well, this is how you would achieve that is you could go ahead and tag in that VLAN on a V switch and put the device as a network. Now, one last thing I wanna add on is Yes, devices can have multiple NICs, and those NICs can be on multiple V-switches. So there are other ways to handle, you know, you don't have to have a V-switch access to all those VLANs. You can go ahead and actually add in other NICs to allow that virtual machine, or that guest, I should say, access to that VLAN. I hope this video helped explain what virtual switches, V-switch, standard switch, whatever you may call it, actually is and how it works. Go ahead and make sure, you know, you got a lab, you're trying to learn things, go ahead, set it up. Worst you're gonna do is break things, it's a lab environment, that's what we have them for, right? Sorry I don't have any videos yet about networking, how to set up the VLANs properly and actually route them and things like that. I know there's plenty of videos out there, I will be working on my own videos, so it kinda goes all together. But I am also working on updating a lot of my videos, some of the older videos that don't have proper audio, proper recording equipment, just because I really feel like that it, now that I do have the proper equipment that it's time to go ahead and do that. As always, guys, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for all the support. Make sure you click the like button. You know, dislike it if, you, if there's something that's wrong. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what's wrong. Go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And share it out if you can. That, that's always a great help. As always, though, I'll see you in the lab.